Hey guys, so today we have a special guest, a friend of ours, filmmaker Adam is here with us to talk about shooting a scene and going through creative setbacks and, mm-hmm. and how to work through that. What are some things that you do to prepare for a short film? So I used to come from a place of sort of guerrilla filmmaking where yeah. you'd have a cool idea, you'd get to your location mm-hmm. with your gear and just kind of make it up as you go along. And yeah. I, I did love a lot of the stuff I made back then, but these days it's... You know the the full. It's the work. It's the pre-production work. Uh, having it, the very least, a script you're starting from. Yeah. Uh, I don't always do storyboards because I kind of suck at drawing. <laughs> um, but I'll do at least a shot list with like a general gist of what I want to get. Yeah. And mainly, I do that for the purposes of not only uh, knowing what I want to shoot when I get there, but how to maximize the use of time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's the the biggest thing. Because really. timing is usually, I mean, is always important. Um, but you know. We have some experience doing like 48s and competitions and things like that. So it's like focusing on what's important, what's not important, and usually going into a project where, you know, let's say you have six pages for a short and like what can I cut, what can I keep, and Mm, kind of what's important. So um, obviously along with the preparation and, and, and having a script or figuring out your crew members and seeing what we're going to do location wise. What are a couple of things that like help you decide what to keep and what not to keep? For me, I kind of consider myself to be a storyteller first and foremost. Mm-hmm. So everything to me comes down to what's going to tell the best story or get our story across best. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at our script and when I do the, the kind of the script breakdown, the shot lists, I'll mm-hmm. sometimes even diagram out the set. Like I'll just do like a top down view and I'll kind of see, okay, so I know for this, I'm going to need two microphones. I can input two microphones into my camera. So I don't necessarily need a separate sound guy mm-hmm. or I know I'm going to need three microphones. Therefore, I need a separate audio recorder and a person to manage it, another person to hold a boom pole. Uh, I'll kind of plan out with what gear I know I have access to on the day, how many people I need to record, and I'll kind of make like a a to-do list for how many crew members, what equipment I need. And it's, um, it's a good way to keep an eye on not only what do I need to bring with me, but what do I have to worry about in any given moment? Because mm-hmm. if I'm directing, but then also worrying about the lights myself, or if I'm directing or, um, <clears throat> sorry, let's say if I'm shooting and also managing audio levels, I know that I need to find other people to manage other things because I can only focus on so much before yeah. I'm not an effective director anymore. Right. right. A quick question here is like, if you had a choice and there was a budget, like what role would you say, this is the one I'm going to choose and let me let everybody else to focus on other Um, The rare times I'm working on a shoot where I have a full crew and I'm just directing, for example, I, I'm, I primarily consider myself an editor and director are probably my two strongest skill sets. I'm, I have a great interest in lighting, a great interest in shooting. I I love doing those things and I'll gladly step in on it. But if I try to do it all, I, I, I don't do anything really well. Yeah. So if I have a full crew, I love to focus on just directing. And um, I mean, the first time I actually had that opportunity where I could focus on one thing, I was standing there while I had a crew of 20 running around, setting up lights and craft services and this, hmm. that, and the other thing. And I'm just sitting there like, what do I do? Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was so awkward to just like not have a direct responsibility <laughs> until right, I was right. ready to roll cameras. And, and then on the other hand, I've had other shoots where I'm worrying about so much at once that I go mm. to call action and an actor goes, what am, what am I supposed to be doing? And I go, oh. I knew I was forgetting oh, something. that was my job yeah, too. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't tell you what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that about action. that. <laughs> um, but talking about, so transitioning from that, so shooting, I want to go like the individual scene. You got anything good to go. Um, what do you find is like one thing people don't focus on enough when shooting an individual scene, whether on purpose or not, what do you think they fail to focus on that actually rises? While on set, I think that audio is something that's often mm. kind of has a lower priority put on it. Just in feedback from my own earlier work and just a lot of other professionals I see out there, a lot of people will tell you that even if you can't make your video look good, at the very least make it sound good. Because mm-hmm. a video that doesn't sound good doesn't come across as professional. Even if you're not shooting in 4K or you don't have a gimbal or you know whatever else, right. if you can clean a lot up, you know, when you're editing with color correction and all that. But audio, there's probably the least amount you can do to fix audio afterwards mm-hmm, right. versus a lot of other things. So always make sure you're um, 
you know, you're dedicating the patience and the time to record good audio, whether it's yourself or with a separate right. audio engineer on set. Lighting is probably the second thing to that because I think a lot of people will go, okay, I have an iPhone, I have a, an actor, we're going to shoot a thing. But having just a little bit of lighting, I mean, even what you guys have set up here is great. Yeah. Um, a little bit of lighting can set you apart to make you look so much more professional. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a difference. You know, lighting, what we do with lighting is, okay, you want to show enough information, right? You also want to, like you said, separate yourself from just the basic, you set up a camera and mm -hmm. kept going. Um, but also to give you the feel and like the texture of the scene. So Definitely. we can, mm -hmm. you know, for example, shoot through a grate and like there's a design on the wall and you know, that yeah. wasn't there originally or, um, you know, anything we've, you know, shoot through blinds and make like a, you know, a fifties cop scene or you just have, Absolutely. you know, blinds through there or whatever. But lighting is, is a very important audio is very important. Like you said. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and if I can actually take a note off sure. what you just said about adding like a texture to the scene, yeah. um, that's another thing when you're trying to like kind of set yourself apart. There's a lot of things you can do with just the mood of a shot. Again, with even if you don't bring any lights with you. I, I did um, one shoot that was supposed to be like a, a tense clandestine meeting in like a parking garage. Mm -hmm. And we knew one thing we wanted to to kind of add to that tension was we never wanted any one actor to have their face completely lit in any given time. They were always going to be a half shrouded in shadow. Yeah. Because that adds like the, the mood and the texture of the scene. And the we only had so much control over the space. So part of it was just blocking the actors in relation to the lights, the fluorescent lights that were in the space mm -hmm. and allowing us to have that kind of contrast on mm -hmm. their faces. And we still had a couple of their small lights for fills or for like a little rim light on their shoulders, but having, um, you know, using that space effectively to achieve right. the mood you're going for was a real benefit. Right. Right. Like kind of just seeing what you have around to kind of adapt that to mold your film and the look, but going on to making things look good, you know, there's the inevitable things that go wrong. People yes. don't show up. You have, you know, random chimpanzees on set <laughs> that you have to account for. It's um, Jumanji in the real life. Yeah, you have problem setbacks, you know, daylight is fading. Monkey and those are wrenches. moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are moments where it make you go, fuck, because you yeah. have to deal with it. Yes. So we have a Christian. So introducing our new segment mm -hmm. on our channel. We have the bucket, oh fucks. Yes. Here it is. The lovely bucket, as you Hopefully see, it's you can made see with the, love. Yes. Um, but we have a couple options in there, and we're going to pick two random that um things that make you go fuck and how would you adapt to that adam so so you okay. have you have the power here in this in this short film you're in a in a short film you're directing maybe even producing the project <laughs> and these things are happening to you and it's your job to figure out how to move forward how to get this done in in the time that you have i'll, I'll pick my own poison literally have a jingle we have one actor has an emergency and has to leave early Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully it's not the lead actor. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's not. It's hopefully not, not. Yeah. It's not. It's not the lead. But for example, if you have a a two a two person scene or mm. a three person mm. scene, but one of the one of the actors needs to head out. You know, maybe not at this moment, but you have thirty minutes, forty five minutes. Okay. Left with them. Right, so let's say we'll take a semi real example. We'll set up this this uh, scenario here. We're shooting a, a two person dialogue scene. We're gonna go very basic. We're gonna do a wide shot of both people talking to each other. We'll do uh, two over the shoulders mm -hmm. uh, from each perspective. If I know that character A, I have all day. Character B has to leave. In 45 minutes or an hour i'm gonna use my shot list and my scheduling to basically say okay we're gonna get the wide shot first because that's a shot where i know i need both mm -hmm. actors simultaneously right, right. and then i'm gonna get the over the shoulder where i see the actor who has to leave sooner i'm gonna get everything looking at that person first and then when I get to the over the shoulders of the other guy, opportunity, I want to have an over the shoulder of the actor who has to leave early, actor B. I want their mm -hmm. shoulder in the frame, but if they have to leave early, worst case scenario, I just scrap the over the shoulder and do a direct shot of the other person. Like a closer shot. Like a, like a tighter the, shot, mm -hmm. more yeah. of a motivated medium. Sure. Better case scenario, if the person has to leave, but let's say they're wearing a costume piece, like a, like a jacket or something that we gave them, I'll put that jacket on one of our crew members. And yeah. just so I have the same nice. clothing in frame still. And as long as you don't see the hair, like they're not like, you know, like white guy, black guy kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> normally speaking, you can get away with it in most cases. Right, it works right. pretty well. Boom, saw. Good solution. See, there you go. He knows what he's doing here. <laughs> no, Second one. one another more. fuck? Okay, yeah. another fuck. <laughs> Location has customers and they can only block for a few minutes at a time. Okay, fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, we're shooting in so, a bar. Okay. Yeah, for shooting a in a bar, scene. grocery store, whatever. You know, you have that scene. It's a part of your schedule. You have 10 people with you mm -hmm. and you show up and they say, well, I, you know, I did say that we were going to give you a spot, but 
Okay, mm-hmm. so like we can like we can block aisle eleven, but only for ten minutes or something like sure. that. So I could generally again I'll look back to my script, my shot list, and I'll say, okay, I know to get these. Let's say I have six shots I want to get in that aisle. I'll take a look and I'll basically see, okay, for, from a storytelling perspective, can I tell this the story of this scene in two shots versus six? Is is that an option? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if I'm shooting four K, a lot of cases we'll shoot four K, but we deliver in ten eighty and in high def. Then we can do a trick called punch ins. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, if you're shooting in four K, but presenting your video in high def sure. you can zoom in up to two times on that video and not lose any quality in theory so i'll go in and say okay if i want a medium and a close-up of each person i can shoot in 4k in the medium and then later on in editing i can punch into a, a close-up as well mm-hmm. right. so i can shoot two shots and use it as four shots if i want right. so I'll, I'll use tricks like that to kind of limit how many shots i need to get in the space and then i'll also try to figure out ways to maximize that effort by punch-ins or whatever other tricks I can pull out, uh, out from under my sleeve. I think you saved yourself in both scenarios. Mm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. A successful filmmaker here um, okay. always has to have these solutions in their brain just in case these things What's happen. What's the Bear Grylls things? Overcome, adapt, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> overcome, adapt. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Along with that, we wanted to have you on here and you wanted to discuss creative solutions, things like that, because you are having an event soon. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. On short filmmaking. And I don't want to ruin that description. So go ahead and let us know of what that event is going to be. I appreciate it. Um, so I'm giving a, a sort of a tech talk in Norwalk, Connecticut on February 19th. Uh, it's part of an event series called Norwalk IO. Mm-hmm. Um, those are hosted by a company I work for called Datto. And uh, basically every month there's something different. Uh, someone might talk about hacking or someone talked about ham radio one time. Uh, back in April, I did a course called uh, 20 years of digital video in two hours or less Mm -hmm. and i'm doing another one next month on a how to shoot a short film and this is going to be about an hour and a half focusing on all the things you need to think about to shoot a short scene we'll basically let attendees come and actually pick some roles so two people can be actors we'll have a couple people on sound a couple Mm -hmm. people on light a couple people on lighting and i'll walk everyone through how to safely use the gear and we'll shoot like a one to two person scene and um in the future if we people enjoy it and want to do a follow-up session we'll take that footage and do like a a workshop where i show people how to edit that scene that we shot in the prior one so it's it's kind of like a a quick crash course for people at different levels Mm -hmm. Mm they're able to choose different jobs in the production and you kind of show them a quick way to how to get a project or at least a scene for a project completed yeah and my real goal is to have it accessible so if you're new off the street never done this before we'll right. speak in terms that you can understand right mm. if you've got experience want to get better we'll have some tips and tricks for you and i really just want to get across um how to you know use all those tools for good storytelling how to be safe on set and then how to li- uh, pave the way for a smooth editing process ultimately that sounds like something that a lot of people should be going yeah. to. I feel like, you know, we do have a lot of internet, YouTube tutorials and, and access to a lot of content. Mm-hmm. But I think going to events like this will help with one, just get your hands on the gear. Hands on. Uh, gear Absolutely. that you don't probably have yourself or can't afford yet, as well as networking with different networking, people. Networking, meeting people, yeah. Um, you know, meeting people like you, meeting people, other, uh, other people in the area that might be interested in doing something like that. So even if they don't, let's say, go to another event, they can at least connect with those people and say, hey, let's do something, you know, the next weekend, uh, you know, to create a short or whatever, you know, a skit, yeah, something absolutely. that will be creative for them to have their hands on it and actually put content out. Yeah. And as I'm sure you guys know, every set ever could always use more PAs. There's no yeah. such thing as too many PAs. <laughs> Never enough PAs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you have someone who is interested in this stuff and wants to learn, yeah. jumping in on a shoot as a PA is a great way to kind of touch yep. a little bit of everything and yeah. see what interests you and will inspire you to learn more. Right. Most PAs have done every job as well as being in background extra in a, mm-hmm. in a scene to fill a room. So, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, we do want to thank you for coming and talking yes, about, yes. you know, creative solutions and short filmmaking and, and your event and big thank you to you for, for coming by. Well, thanks for having today. me. And uh, in the comments too, if you are currently working on a film, short film, whatever it is, tell us uh, some of your stories and your challenges you have to overcome. Uh, we want to know below. And if this yes. video helped you, thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, you can subscribe, hit the bubble below to be notified when we release new videos we do videos on movies entertainment television 